Uh, good afternoon. Um, so we have in this session three talks, starting uh, with uh, Caitlin Heydrich. Uh, Caitlin is a PhD student at uh, Center for Geospatial Analytics at North Carolina State University. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for sticking around to this late afternoon session. Um, I'm going to talk today about uh, grass and Jupiter, an introduction to grass Jupiter. Um, and uh, thank you to Anna and Vashek, who are also uh, integral to this, this work. Um, but before we get started, yeah, I am a PhD student at North Carolina State University, which has another geo for all lab there. Um, I work with Anna and Vashek, advised by Helena Matasheva. Um, and through that work, I'm also a, a TA for GIS 714. And I thought since this was an educational, educational theme of session, I would frame our discussion of grass Jupiter around uh, using it in a course. So uh, this past spring, I TA'd Geospatial Computation and Simulation, which is a course that all of our first year PhD students in geospatial analytics take. Uh, and this is not a new course. It's been taught for many years using um, these web-based tutorials. So the instructions are online, and then students do it locally on their own machine using all FOSS um, packages, mostly GRASS GIS. Um, and we decided that we were going to update it so that this year it was all based in Jupyter Notebooks, but still used GRASS. But before I dive into what that looks like, I just want to back up and enter, make sure we're all on the same page about GRASS GIS and Jupyter Notebooks. Um, so GRASS GIS is an open source GIS software, uh, geoprocessing software, and it has over 500 tools in its base installation, and then the add-ons have another 400 tools. So it's a huge toolbox that's really powerful if you can access it. Um, and there are many different ways that you can access it. There's the graphical user interface, which I've shown the new single pane window here. Um, which was released recently. There's also a command line interface, a Python API, um, C, and it's also integrated with R, QGIS, and there's even a REST API, Actinia. Uh, and then Jupyter Notebooks um, are like a new, an extremely popular format. They're a document that mix markdown, like narrative text and even equations with live code and then the output of that code. So in the background they're running a, it's got like a IPython kernel, but you can also set it up with over a hundred different other kernels. So they're really powerful communication tools. I actually made this PowerPoint in a Jupyter notebook um, so I can embed cells and then see the output of them. So you can see this is an example where we have that narrative text the live code and then the output of it and the output can even be interactive. Uh, when I turned it into a slide though, um, this would be changing with this in a real notebook. <laughs> uh, okay, so you can see that there'd be a, a big motive for us to integrate the two because Jupyter is such a powerful communication tool and it's really nice the way that it mixes all those different elements, uh, learning elements. Um, but, and GRASS does have this existing AP, API, Python API, but there was just like a couple hurdles that um, would make the integration a lot better, like visualization techniques and uh, some data management strategies. So we developed GRASS Jupyter, which is a sub package of GRASS GIS, so when you install Grass, you're installing Grass Jupyter with it. It was included in the main Grass JS distribution, starting with version 8.2, um, and it's meant to fit seamlessly. Like the syntax is consistent with uh, Grass's existing um, syntax. Okay, and you can try it out in Binder. At the end, I'll give a link to this presentation, and you can click on it. Um, if you aren't familiar with Binder, it's a compu cloud computational environment, so you can try Grass Jupyter out without installing it on your own machine. Okay, so uh, we redesigned this course so that it used Grass Jupyter. Uh, 
here's the link to the course repo on GitHub, and you can launch it in Binder and try all the materials that we used in this course last semester. Um, and I think to show what Grass Jupiter really looks like in practice, we'll just walk through um, a small excerpt from one of our uh, notebooks that was on surface water processes. Okay, so getting started with Grass and Jupiter. After you've installed Grass and Jupiter on your local machine, um, in the notebook, you have to start a Grass session. And so this is a pretty standard block of code that's at the beginning of all of our notebooks. Um, we're pointing Python to where our Grass Python packages are, Grass script, which is the, one of the Python APIs, the other one being PyGrass, uh, and Grass Jupiter. Um, and then we start the session with grassjupiter.init. Uh, and that starts the session and it also handles some of the environmental vari variables in the back end um, that you used to have to set manually if you were trying to use a notebook. Um, and now we have a grass session going. We can access all of our data. Um, in this example, we're, we've set our project space to the North Carolina sample database and then our map set is uh, like our homework three. Okay, uh, so now that we've started our grass session, we wanna start doing some analysis. So we, in this first section, are going to model a small flood, like a lake. So this would be like we put a dam in or we're filling a bathtub. Uh, we give it a seed point and then we can display the out point, output with our first grass Jupiter visualization technique, which is the map module. Um, and so, we create an instance of it, and then we add the two rasters, our elevation raster and the output of the previous uh, command, the our lake, uh, the flood one, and then we show it with dot show. And this output is just a simple PNG image. Um, and so it's, it's pretty, it's our most simple visualization technique. Um, and then, because this was a course and it's really neat to be able to integrate this tutorial material with the live code and questions, we asked students to give it a try themselves. Um, and we can also visualize things in 3D. So this is the next Grass Jupiter visualization tool in your toolkit. It's Map 3D. It lets you make 3D images. They're just PNG images. They're not interactive. Um, but they, uh, yeah, can make nice uh, renderings like this and you can save them on your local machine with .save and um, you can overlay all sorts of other things like we are overlaying a legend here with the .overlay D legend, but you could also overlay like a bar, a scale bar. Okay, so the syntax of both these modules um, I want to explain how it's similar to the existing Grass display library. So if you're a Grass user, you know that Grass has a whole family of display modules. So in that toolbox of 500 tools, there's a portion of them that are specifically for adding graphical elements to the active um, graphics frame. And so we can call those modules using this shortcut. We take the name of the module, which would be like d.rast or d.legend, and we replace the dot with an underscore and append it to the end of the, uh, the instance of the, the class, and it will route the contents of the parentheses to the module. So it is really convenient because it prevents us from having to reinvent the entire wheel. Instead, you know that you can call any Grass family display module and send the contents um, over that way. Okay, so our example moves along. We move from just making like this simple bathtub or uh, um, dam simulation to modeling sim uh, a flood along a section of river using the height above nearest drainage methodology. And so it's nice because we can include all this um, narrative text. Here we are uh, doing some watershed modeling, deriving the flow accumulation, the streams, the drainage direction. And then uh, 
will go through all these, these uh, modeling steps. I won't go through it all. And then at the end, we end up with this time series of the flood happening. And the output of the previous step, this um, R Lake series where we're making that flood, that inundation flood along the, the river is a grass space-time data set. And it's really nice in the graphical user interface, the way that you can make animations out of space-time data sets. And so uh, you can now do the same thing in a Jupyter notebook with a grass Jupyter time series map. And so similar to that syntax I was talking before, you can add base base elements with uh, D underscore Rast or any of the other display family of modules, and then add your space-time data set with add raster series or add vector series. And then the output looks like this. And when I converted this notebook to HTML, the interactivity also died. So I made a GIF of it, <laughs> GIF. So now you can see. Uh, the flood occurring and it would be in line in the notebook and it would have the sliding bar would be working so you could um, explore the results of your, your flood right in line in the notebook. Okay, so um, we have map, we have map 3D, we have uh, support for time series, uh, but interactivity is uh, a really handy tool when you're doing geospatial analysis, being able to zoom in and zoom out, toggle between layers. So we decided to integrate grass with Folium for that. So Folium is a popular Python library for creating leaflet maps. And so it creates these HTML maps that can be displayed in line. And it has a huge selection of base maps. And you can even give it uh, custom tile sets to put in the background and you can export your leaflet map and embed it on your website. So they're really convenient sort of portable outputs. Um, but the decision to integrate with Folium came with its own difficulty. And so briefly, I just want to touch on why it was difficult to integrate these two. Uh, Folium along with many of the other web uh, or HTML uh, mapping libraries is in Web Mercator, and you might have a totally different projection of your data in GRASS. And so in order to put your data in Folium, we have to reproject it. And so that was one of the bigger hurdles in developing this library was figuring out how to reproject it to a temporary location, save it as temporary files that are in the correct projection and correct format to be consumed by Folium. But what's nice about it is that you can pretty simply make these like really nice maps that uh, display in line. So you can have um, the elevation map is from grass. I'll go back to that. This is how I'm making that map. And the third block of text, grassjupiter.raster, is where we're taking the raster from grass, writing it to a PNG and getting the bounding box, and then adding it to the existing Folium instance. Um, and that makes this map. But this might be really difficult if you aren't a Folium user to have all that text and learn all the Folium things, all that code. So we also developed Interactive Map, which is just a shortcut to doing something like that. This also broke when I is exporting it, but this map would look the same as the other one. We are just wrapping it all into interactive map. Um, the downside of interactive map is that you have less control over the folium map, but it's much faster, um, faster way of exploring data. Oh, and, and it lets you like toggle between layers if we had multiple layers there. OK, so we. Uh, implemented a whole course that used Grass Jupyter, and we had a bunch of different units, and we uh, hosted all these notebooks in GitHub, and then we let students either run them locally or run them through Binder, that cloud computing environment that I mentioned earlier. And it actually went pretty well. Students noted that they really appreciated being able to change the parameters in the Grass module, so you can imagine that if you were 
doing that flood model I was talking about earlier, you could change, maybe you want to have the flood go to six meters or two meters, and you can see that real time right in the notebook. Um, and then having it hosted on GitHub and Binder was also really convenient, uh, easy to access the notebooks. Uh, if students had trouble setting it up locally, they could run the whole course in Binder, and so we could sidestep a lot of technical issues that way. Um, but we also did run into some challenges. There have to be. Um, for setting up the notebooks to run on local machines was difficult for many students. Um, and even students that did get them run, running locally often encountered issues that were like grass to the, specific to that operating system or their version of grass, finding other grass bugs. Um, and occasionally, Binder was unreliable. We found that uh, at times during the spring, the computational nodes of uh, binder were like all taken up and none of us could get the get the um, notebooks running Yeah, so in summary grass Jupiter provides session and data management these four different visualization techniques and it was really effective for us to implement in the classroom and to use it to exp explain a lot of high-level um, grass workflows um, and there's still a lot of work to be done in the future. Um, yeah, the, uh, implementing other uh, mapping, instead of Folium, you could do IPy leaflet or GeoViews, and um, I'm pretty interested in pursuing some of those, choosing different backends for that interactive mapping. Um, and I think that's low-hanging fruit because it's already a GeoJSON and a PNG image with bounds. Uh, and then some parallelization and maybe improving the formatting of uh, text output from some of the grass modules so that it displays nicely in a Jupyter table or pandas table or something. Yeah, um, I'll come back to this slide, but that's the end of my talk, and I really want to say thank you to Google Summer of Code that sponsored this work last summer, to the grass community, which sponsored my mini project, and uh, to Helena, Stefan, and Vero back there for all of their guidance, and to the class who were my guinea pigs. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about this, to try it out, uh, here's the link to the slides, and you can click on any of those binder links. They'll take you to like that co uh, cloud computing environment. You can test it out. There's also a whole host of notebooks where uh, you can explore this uh, on your own. Um, we've got the manual page. There was a workshop on Monday that Anna led that uh, is just an introduction to grass uh, more generally, but in a Jupyter notebook, so it's a really great starting point. Um, there's our course materials, and then um, now that we've integrated, uh, or now that grass is easier to use in Jupyter, on grass's GitHub page, there's actually a bunch of uh, notebooks that are also an introduction to grass, and so those are linked in the main grass readme file, so you can find them there. Uh, or at this link. All right, thank you.